Good morning once again, and welcome back. Thanks for coming here again. Uh, now I will be discussing about uh, the mathematics. Uh, I will give you a brief idea about mathematics involved in uh, designing a, a crawling robot. Uh, before then, uh, I will show you some video uh, of uh, robots which were developed at Waseda University. So first, uh, this is a single axis robot it cannot rotate it will just uh, traverse so here uh, this is uh, this is a, a cantilever probe it uh, scratches the surface uh, not exactly this it touches the sur surface and if there is any uh, anomaly so it can detect similarly uh, in front uh, uh, they have a cctv camera so this is one type of robot This is a multi uh, multi axis robot. Uh, it's, uh, this video is uh, uh, made at two, 2012. <coughs> now students are working on this robot to automatically detect bends and all. So. So if uh, if your camera has some particular angle, so it can rotate and scan the entire area. This is uh, to show that uh, it can provide enough traction to climb a vertical pipe. This helix motion it is useful when there is a obstruction in front in, 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 in front of this robot so to avoid or uh, to overcome that obstruction this helical motion is used this uh, young he worked on this uh, robot And this is another video. Here, uh, uh, manually they have controlled uh, the robot to pass through a uh, elbow bend. So this is one view and another view is top view how wheels are oriented to to show how wheels are oriented to pass through that bend. So now, uh, uh, now they they are doing it manually. So uh, every time they have to move a little bit and uh, turn the wheels like that. But uh, students are trying to develop uh, uh, automatic uh, uh, automatic movement through elbows. I'll be presenting lecture on uh, the mathematics in in designing a crawling robot. So for uh, for uh, designing a crawling robot. The most important is it should pass through an elbow. So uh, the dimension of robot you should choose like that. It should not stuck. It should not stuck in an elbow. So uh, basically, uh, 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 it is like uh, I have considered 90 degree bend, and 
uh, if a robot can pass through 90 degree bend, it will uh, it can pass through any other uh, any other bend. Maybe 180 degree. It's a combination of two 90 degrees. So if it pass, it can pass through 90 degree bend. It can pass through any other bend. So. Now, uh, if uh, there is a bend and if it has a radius of curvature r and diameter of the pipe is d. So, uh, I will say that uh, length of This is width critical and length critical. Uh, this two lengths are critical because uh, uh, if I fix this length, then uh, WC, WC the width of robot cannot increase more than other. If 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 it if if you choose more than this uh, W critical, then it will fall here. This part will come down and it will fall here and robot will not able to move uh, move through this elbow. Similarly, if you fix this WC, then uh, if you increase LC, you cannot fit in between this elbow, uh, in between this elbow. So that's why I call it uh, as a critical, uh, critical uh, parameters. So what happened is uh, when, uh, when you fix one, now uh, you have uh, you have you have two 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 possibilities. If th if this is th these are the critical value, then you have two possibilities. One is you increase the length uh, length of the robot, but you decrease the uh, width, or you increase the width, you decrease the length. Uh, I will show like if you increase the width, the robot will be like. Like this, this blue line. Uh, so, uh, and similarly, if we uh, increase the length, then we have to decrease uh, this uh, 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 width of the robot. I won't draw; otherwise, it will get messy here. So, uh, okay. Okay. Then first, uh, uh, we'll find uh, what are uh, this. What should be the W, uh, WC and LC for a particular elbow? If uh, this is an elbow where the radius of curvature of the elbow is one R, there are different type of elbows. Like where this uh, in long radius elbow, it uh, this this radius of curvature is like. Uh, it more than more than 1.5 r. Push uh, This long radius. It's uh, more than 1.5. More than 1.5 are long radius. Short radius. Uh, so uh, the bend will uh, the curvature curvature will be little bit more and uh, 
it's, it will be more easy for a robot to pass through long radius than a short radius. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss our short radius. If it passes through short radius, then automatically it can pass through long radius. No. These are simple uh, geometry. From geometry, we can find uh, LC and WC. Since this angle is 90 degree and this will be 45, or I can say maybe theta is okay. No. This is R.
A-B. And if this new, uh, uh, and for the robot, uh, if we choose a new length less than this, then it can pass through to the band. So here, A-B is, uh, this value so this is w plus oc is uh, here this is r and this is d by 2 so r minus d by 2 also and the new length is 2 times a dash b there is times uh, plus g by 2 whole square minus w plus r minus g by 2 whole square. So uh, once uh, so it may happen like uh, sometimes we uh, we have to improve the or we have to uh, choose uh, width of the word more. So in that case, once we decide what is the width, the length of the word should not uh, more than this length. Otherwise, it will not be able to pass through the band. Okay. The, uh, the other case is when uh, when the uh, when the length of robot is more than this critical length. Can I can I rub Anyway, this uh, uh, handout will be given to you. So, uh, so uh, the second situation is It's not working. It's, uh, some problem with board, I think.
Okay, now, uh, I guess, uh, A dash, B dash. A dash, uh, B dash, A is, maybe B, no, this length is, uh, this uh, CM equal to CM plus, uh, see, uh, this triangle and this triangle is a uh, uh, similar triangle because this two angle 45 degree, this two uh, angle 45 degree. So, uh, and this, uh, so since this is a similar triangle and it has a common uh, length, so all sides are uh, same. That means this is equal to uh, this side. So, I will write, I have taken this part. Now, from here to here and here to here is twice plus 2 dm and I will subtract this part minus p d. There is a length, uh, length. So, what is CM? Uh, this is 45 degree. So, this CM is uh, this uh, OC, isosceles triangle. So, uh, OC is R minus D by 2. Yes, to dm. What is dm? dm? dm. dm is this height. Yeah, uh, this height. The critical WC, uh, critical height of the robot. For for a particular elbow, that WC will be fixed. WC and LC will be fixed. So, uh, and. And we found that W and W C to be uh, this okay, simply I will write W C minus P D P D P D now again this is forty five, this is forty five, so this is equal to this. So P D is your new W. WC is AO, AO cost forty five, AO cost forty five. There is this length minus this part. That is R minus D by two, and then again this is W. So from from this equation, uh, we can find what will be the W if we know uh, the length. Uh, this is actually uh, length is two A dash B dash. So twice of this, we can. Uh, find uh, what will be the w so from this equation uh, we can find what will your uh, what what will be the new uh, w if if we have to choose a longer bot longer module uh, then what will be the new w so like this uh, this is a uh, this is a kinematic analysis for uh, to decide what will be the size of uh, each module You have any question? Thank you. 
my idea was to just uh, uh, show uh, uh, it is not a very difficult uh, analysis. So, uh, just to show how uh, we fix uh, size of a module. So, uh, if you want uh, uh, further you want uh, to increase the length then you can make modular robot. You make one module as a one uh, uh, sensor and connect it with some uh, flexible joint. So, uh, this is only for rigid part if uh, you have a rigid uh, uh, the, uh, the rigid part length and uh, height should be restricted by these equations. And you can increase, uh, if you increase joints, you can increase the number of modules. Second is uh, the drag force calculation. This is, uh, this is only for uh, passive, uh, passive drive, uh, where fluid, uh, uh, the flow of fluid is used uh, to drag the robot. Uh, this is only for that. Uh, we do not use any external power to propel uh, that uh, propel the robot uh, forward. So, uh, it's just uh, this is a, this is just a brief uh, uh, how to do the calculation. It's uh, uh, there will be a uh, when uh, of this uh, fluidly flowing. So there will be a drag force. One drag force is directly uh, because of uh, trust on this back, back plate and other one is you do the skin effect here uh, the rough the surface of this this surface the rougher the surface there will be the more skin uh, skin uh, effect of uh, drag force due to skin effect so uh, this is a formula for calculating uh, drag i think okay this is a formula for calculating uh, 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 drag force due to this on directly on the uh, drag force due to thrust on this cross section and this is a formula for uh, calculating the screen friction uh, screen friction drag force so uh, if you combine these two so uh, that will be the only uh, source of uh, uh, source of force which will drive the vehicle and uh, resistance or resistance uh, will be offered by wheels. Those are uh, uh, wheels, and since uh, uh, we know that uh, rolling resistance of uh, rolling resistance is very uh, 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 very negligible or very uh, less compared to uh, sliding uh, friction. However, we have considered here uh, uh, rolling, uh, rolling, uh, rolling only. But if uh, if uh, if robot does do not have uh, wheels, uh, it just like uh, pigs, uh, the pigs, uh, traditional pigs. So we have to use uh, uh, this uh, CR accordingly. Now, uh, uh, for in this problem, I have considered three uh, leg robot, and uh, this is the. Uh, uh, static equilibrium from a static equilibrium we can get the get this equation this is n1 plus mg uh, n1 plus mg in this direction and uh, in upward direction it's n1 plus n2 uh, okay and, and n1 is uh, from the springs uh, uh, it will uh, springs will exert some pressure on the wall so uh, this is n1 and n2 is from this uh, n2 reaction is because of this uh, mass so from static equilibrium we, we get this equation and uh, and since uh, we consider our robot uh, it will it will not have acceleration so uh, if uh, you can design it for acceleration also then you have to put uh, acceleration value here so i have considered a as zero i have considered it it will move in uh, uniform velocity so it comes to a, uh, a very simple equation uh, like this drag force is equal to this resistive force from that we can fi find out what should be the mass of this robot what will be the uh, what will be the maximum mass of this robot which this uh, uh, on this pressure uh, of the fluid exerted by the fluid can move this robot forward so it it should not be like uh, uh, i can choose any arbitrary value of mass and it will uh, able to propel so uh, using this uh, simple for, uh, calculation we can uh, determine what should be the mass of uh, uh, robot and and yeah this is uh, this is for one module. So, if you add module, uh, 
uh, this uh, no, uh, normal reaction that will increase. So accordingly, you have to uh, you have to design. And in third, uh, this is a pantograph mechanism. So uh, uh, this is for uh, last one is last one was for uh, passive drive, and this one is active drive. When uh, you have uh, you, uh, you control these wheels, you you have motor here, and uh, you uh, control the speed to uh, move this uh, robot forward or backward. So uh, this is uh, 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 simple that uh, virtual work principle using virtual virtual work principle. You can choose uh, what should be your spring uh, stiffness for a particular force. If you know uh, that uh, I need this much traction force to move on vertical wall or inclined wall, if, if you know uh, what, uh, what is the force, then you can find out what should be this uh, spring stiffness. Vice versa, if you have, if you know the spring uh, stiffness. You can find out what will be your uh, traction force. So uh, uh, beforehand, you can decide whether your robot will be able to climb or not. So uh, here, uh, uh, this L, L is the uh, L is length of this link. So x is uh, distance from uh, this this distance a b. So this length is uh, L and uh, the angle is theta. So uh, L cos theta is uh, this uh, x and del x you differentiate it. Similarly, height is uh, this is uh, yeah uh, this is two parts. So h by 2 is L sin theta you differentiate it uh, that one. And uh, since from virtual work principle uh, we know that uh, the uh, virtual work uh, total virtual work is 0. So uh, f this f work uh, virtually it works to move uh, this uh, h and this k it virtually work to displace uh, this uh, del x. So we equate this and uh, finally we can get uh, uh, this uh, relation between f and k, uh, which uh, by which we can decide uh, what should be the stiffness or uh, what will be the value of. Uh, traction force. I, I, so anyway, I, I have come to end of uh, this day. Thank you for listening. You, if you have any question, please. Thank you. Uh, these are actually uh, uh, simple design. They are uh, uh, more complicated design also. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, I will. Uh, up, uh, in my last presentation, I have shown uh, uh, different uh, mechanisms. So, in uh, in website, we will be uploading uh, all all the papers. You can uh, go through those papers. Uh, very clearly, they have mentioned all mechanisms how they did analysis. So, you will get more idea from those papers. Thank you very much.